already. So this is a short introduction to the Interference Inference Interface, which is a program to simulate 2D interference and diffraction effects. And so this is what you'll see when you start up the program. We've got our bearer here over on the left. Uh, it's got two slits in it as openings. And uh, you've all seen double slit experiments before, so I'm going to do something a little bit more exciting. I'm going to open up a slit right in the middle so we get a triple slit experiment. So I've added that opening right here, and then I'll start the simulation by going up here and hitting Run. And so what you can see is we've got this wave coming in from the left. Uh, its amplitude is going to be ramped up gradually. If we just turned it on full blast right at the beginning, uh, then there would be a lot of high frequency components in there, and that could mess up the simulation. Um, this top plot up here shows you the field strength. It shows you EZ. And this plot down here shows you the RMS value of that. And this countdown here is counting down until steady state is reached, and at that point the program will automatically restart averaging the RMS value. And that's a good thing, because uh, if we didn't reset the averaging, it would have all the, uh, the transients baked into the RMS, and that's not what we want when we're going to be searching for maximum uh, and minima later. And so I, I kind of enjoy watching it sort of get to steady state and just waiting for this countdown to count down, but I realize some people uh, you know, value their time more than I do. So this is fast forward mode up here, and this saves some time. It makes it run faster by not updating the plots. It just keeps on going until the countdown is done. And so now that that countdown is done, there's another brief countdown here, and that's just uh, counting over one cycle, uh, during which time it does the averaging to get the final RMS value. And so here we are, we've reached steady state. And so I need to talk about a couple other things now. So you've noticed there's these dashed horizontal and vertical lines across the two big plots. And uh, these are slices through the plots, and in these other three plots we show what's going on along those slices. Uh, so these two plots are the same, they show what's going on along the vertical slice, this plot shows what's going on along the horizontal slice. And specifically you can see there's two traces, there's this yellow one and this green one. Uh, the yellow one shows the field strength, uh, the green one shows plus or minus square root 2 times the RMS value, which gives a nice envelope for the field. And so you can move these uh, dashed lines with either the keyboard or mouse, so I've grabbed onto it moving around with the mouse. Uh, now you, you know, moving it with the keyboard, and so I'll just move it right to the middle here. And what I want to do at this point is find the exact location of the maxima that's, you know, somewhere in this region right here. And so I'm going to use the keyboard for that, for sort of fine control, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these numbers over here. Now these tell us what's going on right where those two dashed lines intersect, right here, or equivalently right there, right where the crosshairs is. Uh, it shows you the X position, the Y position, the instantaneous EZ value, and also the RMS value. And so that's what we're going to be looking at in order to find uh, the maximum. And I, I know just by symmetry that this maximum is going to be at uh, y equals 150, so I'm not going to bother playing with that. I'm just going to play with uh, the x value. And so I'm going to try moving it to the left, and okay, I see that's the right direction because the RMS value increased. So we've got 89, 100, 110, 119, 27, 34, 40, 44, 48, 50, 52, and 52 again. So it looks like we've hit the maximum. I'll go one more to make sure. Yep, down to 51. And so that means we've hit the maxima right here. Um, and so these cyan numbers right here, or equivalently the numbers right here, here, and here, tell you the distances from the different openings to the point where the lines intersect. So reading it off, I can see that the distance is 208 from the top slit to the intersection, uh, 188 from the middle slit to the intersection, and 208 from the bottom slit to the intersection. And for understanding interference and diffraction, it's important to look at the differences in these distances. So 208 minus 208, well that's just zero, and that's not surprising, this looks like an isosceles triangle. Um, the interesting one here is this 188 minus 208, the, uh, the middle distance minus the, either of the outer distances. Now I see 188 minus 208, you know, that's giving me a difference of 20. And why is that? Well, these waves have a wavelength of 20, and the condition for a constructive maxima in this case is that the differences in the distances all have to be an integer multiple of the wavelength, 0, 20, 40, etc. And that's what exactly, and that's exactly what we found right here. And anyhow, so that's a short introduction. Thank you very much for watching.